it looks like the NVMe folks are bringing this technology down to the TCP stack. This is very, very interesting to me. Let's jump into it. So this comes from Computer Weekly. Need rapid networked storage? Take a look at NVMe over TCP. In data storage, speed is more essential than ever. In fact, 90% of IT organizations surveyed by ESG report, uh, recently reported they now need to move faster than three years ago, with 41% accelerating their response speed by more than 50%. NVMe provides a higher level of performance and lower latency than traditional protocols such as SATA, obviously, we know this. No, SATA was designed for hard drives. But as SSD came into the picture, originally they were a little bit slow, right? So SATA can the SATA interface kept up with the speed of the SSD. But as SSD became faster and faster and faster and faster, right? Uh, the SATA bandwidth couldn't keep up. You know, it it's being held back by, uh, by SATA. So PCI Express solved this problem. You know, PCI Express is very fast. It's inboard. You put it directly to the motherboard. There is no cable. Not that the cable is the problem, but uh, it solves the bandwidth problem. But then another problem came up with protocols, basically, right? It, there is no standard uh, for PCIe and SSDs. So NVMe came in to build a standard for this kind of communication. Let's continue. Uh, to extend the low latency benefits in VME across the network. Now they want to move it across the network. This is an onboard motherboard and this is the, the same location. They want to move it in, across the network. They already built something like this called NVMe over fabrics, apparently. Very interesting, where you can have your NVMe drive directly connected to a fiber optics and then have that anywhere else. So now the question really, that's, an, that's interesting. So the question here is, is networked storage, right? So I'm trying to break the problem down here. We have NVMe devices that hooked up into motherboards. So you have as many PCIe slots, you can just put your SSDs and you can have a motherboard with a lot of storage. There's a limitation here, right? But what if I, this motherboard, this computer that hosts this motherboard is not the actual computer that want the storage. It's some remote computer, right? You cannot bring these SSDs and PCIe's on all the remote machines, obviously, to consume the SSDs. That's why our network storage started with uh, even uh, uh, SAN and NAS, you know, network array storage, where you put everything into one machine and then you consume the storage remotely. It's very useful because, hey, my machine doesn't have, it can be a thin client and the storage could be on a network device. So Fabric, apparently this NVMe over Fabric solved this problem for fast SSDs, but it seems to be a cost. Right, fiber optics is expensive. Setup is expensive for fiber optics. This is where NVMe over TCP is useful. But here's my. I'm I'm, I'm thinking out loud here, guys. I have two doubts here. The first one is when, unlike fiber optics, TCP is a protocol, right? And in order to work with a TCP protocol, you need a server that is listening on a particular port. TCP require ports to connect to, right? So does that mean that my NVMe devices will come with this ROM that happen to have special software that listens on a specific port and have an ethernet cable in them so I can hook up my ethernet cable to my SSDs. That's pretty neat. But now I'm worried about memory. Those are gonna be really expensive because TC, listening on TCP port will take certain memory. You need the network adapters. You need to understand, 
You know, you need, you need certain part of the kernel. You don't need the whole Linux kernel. You, you, you don't even need Linux. You just need a way, right? And I'm, I'm pretty sure the NVMe people, I don't know what they're going to do, but are they going to build their own mini kernel that just have this network pieces? I guess you can pull, pull that from Linux. I'm not sure. But then you have to kind of standardize what port you guys going to listen to. And then the other one, once you do that, you have to establish the connection from the clients. And that's easy, right? All the clients are probably operating system clients. So they can connect to this port. They're going to need to understand how to talk to an NVMe over TCP. So they need some sort of client application logic. So the Linux or the Windows need to need a client code to understand how to talk to an NVMe over TCP. I don't think this is going to magically happen. Yeah, to us, applications, it's going to be invisible, right? Higher above, above the stack. But the Linux kernel need to be updated such that it understands how to talk to an NVMe drive over TCP. So it needs to scan, probably. I don't know how right uh w will the nvme drive announces itself uh, to me I, I don't know why they didn't build this over raw specific specific protocol over ip directly i don't i don't see a value of having it on top of tcp to be honest right maybe the data integrity and the retransmission and all that jazz which brings us to the second my second doubt right which which brings us to the second doubt right the not really worried about the uh, uh, the inbound request, you know, from the client sending I/O. Hey, give me LBA zero, LBA one, LBA two, but because these are tiny eh, requests, so they can fit into a single segment, and depending on the window size of the TCP. But once you deliver that, let's assume you read a huge blocks transferring those back might get us into a problem of where uh, uh, where we lose segments and when we lose segment or we lose IP packets which basically means that we're gonna lose TCP segments and this retransmission might slow us down actually right how far how much I have no clue to be honest but these three transmissions is going to kill us because uh, the segments are ordered and right that's that's how tcp works right every let's say you're going to read a huge amount of bytes this will be broken into multiple segments based on the window size which will increase obviously because all of this uh, i i i think a window size will be really large in internal data center 100 gigabit right do you have even 100 gigabit network i'm not sure but but they will be really large so more data will be fed into a single TCP segment, jumbo segments, and then will be sent across the network. So I don't think we're going to run into these retransmission problems as often, but we might. Not sure, really. But yeah, I, these, these kind of question. And again, guys, this is, this is a very pre preliminary report, if you want to call it. Just piece of news i'll keep searching i'll keep uh, investigating the nvme over tcp protocol and see how they work um i might be way off here right but but it just um it's just fascinating to me uh how the industry is moving obviously this is going to save a lot of money right fiber optics is expensive moving to an ethernet based uh and over t uh, over tcp it's going to save a lot of money obviously we don't have to discuss uh why didn't they move to quick uh, i don't think they need that you know um uh, sp specifically because io requests need to be sequential anyway so if you send a lot of requests at the same time all right they're gonna arrive at the same time right these segments will be sent at the same time so i don't believe the order matter here because every io that comes back the response of the io will be tagged with the command that sent it so you know which one is which right unlike http which we have this problem of head of, head of line blocking we don't have that here okay 
might be wrong here but uh, it's, it's fascinating we'll keep you guys updated uh, the more i learn about this what do you guys think this do you think do you find this interesting do you find this boring let me know in the comment section below i'm, the, I'm gonna see you in the next one you guys stay awesome goodbye